Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, seven ways to increase the likelihood of you getting help with your code. That's what we'll be covering today. Absolutely, man. Awesome. Hey, it's Jackie Stook from Copenhagen, in Denmark. Yeah, and Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Hello. Yeah, and- Yo, and today we are going to cover seven tips to increase the likelihood of you getting help with your code or just getting responses quicker, just so if you're stuck on something, you're just, just waiting around for days and stuff like that. So, yeah, You know, let me, let me I don't want to start off on the answers, but I, I want to preface this, this conversation with, you know, I spent a good two years reading the Auto Hockey Forum and never once making a comment. And part of it was I was just kind of afraid. And then I would see how some people would be, and, and the, the most people on the hockey forum are the my, nicest people in the world compared to like um, uh, auto it, right? Like they're a very different animal. But even then, like they get kind of scolded for, for, you know, not doing a good job. And so this this podcast will help you kind of make sure you take your step foot forward. And, and in reality, you're helping yourself and you're helping the people that are trying to answer the questions. So, sorry, I want to jump in there. Yeah, and, and most of these, even the first one here, uh, do your homework first, right? If, if you're just a bit used to either writing code, it depends on your level, right? But if you can try and research how to do it, you know, Google it, and, I don't know, check the forums if, if that's your space, Reddit, uh, it can be Discord, other pieces of, of places that you've found that, that cover the, the code type that you're using. Um, do some research, do your homework. That, that's a really good one. Yeah, and I'll, let me chime in here because I'm laughing because I, I've never really done it. I, I'll, I'll do one-off things, but um, Jackie actually did a lot of time you know, answering. That's how we met, right? Was He was answering questions for me on the forum. And People generally, I try to, to search for my answer first. But people are not they'll put, they'll post the same question that's been asked eighty times before. Hey, I need to send a mouse click. How do I send a mouse click? Right, and it's, it's just like I don't know how the, the auto hockey people that are responding, you know, and, and doing that for a hobby or whatever, like how they can stay nice doing it because it would drive me batty. I, I think that most uh, helpers or whatever we'll call them. Um, they move on, mm. so to speak. They they make sure to move up in the, the answer and the, the difficulty level of the answers that they do give. Sure, they might drop in on how to do a mouse click, or uh, I want to uh, hold the letter G and have the mouse click every thirty seconds or whatever. They might answer that from time to time, but. They'll let other people at that uh, skill level answer more, and they'll use their time on something that better fits their step on their learning ladder or whatever you call that. That's at least how I've looked at it, was kind of what I did myself, and that's still what I'm seeing in the forum. So you will see someone using a lot of time there, answering all the questions they can get to, you can see the same person have answered a bunch of questions even on the first page of a form. And that's most likely because someone is doing exactly what I did back in the day. They're trying to help as many people, trying to get that code understanding down Mm -hmm. by trying to show others that this one thing, I can do that. And by helping a lot of people with that issue, they'll be cementing that knowledge for themselves. So. Yeah, which which plays into, I think it was our very last podcast where we talked about, you know, leveling up faster, right? And part of that is re, redoing the same stuff over and over and cementing that into your your brain, right, on how it works. Um, yeah. and, and by the way, something you mentioned earlier just made me think of an eight thing. So I've added here a little bonus at the extra, which I think is a great one, but um, we'll save it for later here. Uh-huh. So, so getting into the... Um, the second thing, which is kind of a big list, and I think we should swap back and forth on this. I'll start, though. Of uh, All right, so what do you provide? When you ask your question, what do you provide? And one of the first things, you know, that, that always drives me nuts when I see this is people will they'll say, like, 
hey, I can't get this to work, but they don't actually post anything from their script or they post their, their question is about one line and they post their 4,000 line script, you know, which it, it didn't need to have everything else. Right. So they don't take any time to just break it down to say, I'm trying to solve this. Right. Because when you, when you make it that clear, much, people are much more helpful, you know, willing to help you because it's very clear what you're, you're trying to get help with. Yeah, I, I'd say sometimes people, they might get an error and, and the other Hotkey interpreters will be pointing at one line and then they'll say, this is the line that, that I can't make work and they won't tell you anything about the line. But the reason the line doesn't work is because a variable didn't have the content that was expected or the file didn't exist or whatever, something you can't absolutely, there's no way for you to know it. But um, if if you do something like that, try and post something that resembles working code, right? Some if it's a function that doesn't work, maybe post the function first and say what it does, whatever. You might not need to post your entire script, but if you have the time and the option to pull out a small piece that works standalone, that's of course great way of doing it so if you can. yeah yeah and on top of it, though this is it's not to say you shouldn't if you can let them have access to the full thing if it's not something that's private right i would say is hone in on here is my code that i'm trying to get where i i'm relying on this function i'm gonna i get this you know error uh here's my a link to my entire script if you care to go look at it right if you need it however you know give them the option if you can it is help it can be very helpful but often it's just extra noise and it isn't needed. Yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of options of where you can put a full version of code. It, it might have great ways of color coding your stuff or a great search or, or other pieces of things that you can get by actually putting your code in a different place and you ain't cluttering the forum too much. Sometimes it's better to post a fully working thing on the forum because then you actually know where the resource is instead of putting it on someone else's site or putting it somewhere else. But yeah, if if, if you can post somewhere where you have the full code, but you only provide what's mostly needed, that, that's a really good idea. I'd say the same thing kind of goes when you're posting links and stuff for providing links to the thing that your software is working with. A lot of people with the Hutchie forum and stuff are, of course, working with other programs. So if you can tell people the name of the program that it's trying to automate or the website or linking to the website, sure enough, if the website is accessible to other people, that's, of course, necessary if you want them to have access to it. But you might also be able to post a small bit of working HTML or some of the stuff that will actually help the person that's trying to help you. Right, yeah, that's that's where, let, let's say you're practicing doing some web scraping and you're like, yeah, I'm trying to, to log into this site and it doesn't allow me, blah, blah, well, nine out of 10 times, even, even if I, I can't personally access it because I need a, an actual account, I can still access the login page and why not give us that login page if that's what you're having trouble with, right? And let us actually go there and, and be able to look at the, the full page ourselves because sometimes people, they'll, they'll hey, here's the, and here's the, uh, the outer HTML around this little bit of the form, but we know with like event listeners and other things, like it's, it's things not contained in that code that's causing the issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and then, uh, explaining, uh, you know, if you've already tried a couple other things, you know, save the person the time of saying, you know, you know, I've looked at this, this, and this, and none of these, you know, things work for me. Um, and again, it, you know, part of this is it, it helps people realize you've done your homework, right? I'm much more likely to help someone when I see they've actually made an effort. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say I even made an infographic years back where... Right. We, we cover or I cover some of all of the stuff 
it was about image search, but it still showed me kind of a lot of stuff about what happens when you show that you have done your homework, right? You'll be getting lots more um, traffic to your topic or your, your issue, and you most likely end up getting a solution much quicker if you can actually show other people what you have tried, you've done your homework, you trying to provide links and stuff like that. And it, the same goes for providing relevant info like OS version, fitness version of software, you know, even the circumstances around it, the timing of the needed solution. So if you're in a time pinch, maybe not post, just posting, uh, it's not working. <laughs> That's not your best option. Right? It's, it's like, Give the other person on the other end as much information as you possibly can because you will, by doing so, and the data has shown it, I have some of it in that infographic back then. If you show this stuff, the, the, you'll increase the likelihood of getting a solution by magnitude. Uh, really, uh, one of the things was if you actually show the code that you used, the chance of you getting an answer that works for you is almost 98% on that how to keep well. So that, that, that's a high number. Yeah. And you could say as well, there's numbers in there that, that will tell you you will get the answer quicker if you provide specific types of information and stuff like that. So it, it really does help. So case in point, and I, and I, you know, if you're listening to this, I don't mean to pick on you, but um, someone... Uh, uh, one of my subscribers wrote me and literally said, my auto hotkey isn't working. I don't know why. Please help. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like I, where do I begin? Right. Like it, it, it would take me, you know, back and forth. I can already tell what this person would take me several times to explain, like, I need a lot more information if I'm going to help you. Right. Um, and, uh, and I'm not, you know, Hey, we all, we're all trying, right. I don't mean to pick on them, but, um, it just did make me laugh. I'm like, yeah, yeah how, how, okay, right, I'll help you. Like, I don't know how to help you because I don't even know what your problem is. You didn't mention anything of the error. You didn't give me any code. You didn't even mention if it was tied to the video that you commented on, right? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, spend a little time. Okay, I'd say one of the, the, the things I remember from the data back then was that if you did, never provided the code you, you have tried, 25% mm. or 24% or something like that never got an answer they could use. Wow. The topic was never really resolved, right? Yeah. Because they weren't willing or they didn't think it was necessary or whatever reason, because they weren't able to share any piece of code or show any kind of effort, they, they never ended up getting a solution, which is sad. And didn't you have something there also? There was some sort of statistic that if they did X behavior, I forget what it was, but it also changed the speed of the reply, the likelihood that they would get a response within 24 hours, 48 hours or something. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. I, I, again, I can't remember all the exact numbers, but yeah, there, there were, if, if you didn't provide it, before the answer was actually giving you, you would be, uh, let's say, 10 posts in or something like that because oh. it would be too much back and forth. But yeah, there was also indications of if you actually did provide enough information, you might have the answer up to, yeah, 80% quicker or something like that. Mm. It was really, really um, a high increase, 3x, I think you got uh, on some of the, the extra information. So it's really, really useful. I could probably find it and say the exact numbers, but right. yeah. Yeah, it definitely has an effect. Um, the other one, which I'll squeeze into this in general, uh, it's so it's not a separate point, but like, especially for it, let's use auto hockey as an example, because you and I both know that really well. Um, depending on your question and what you're trying to do, more so I'd say, if you think you need live help versus 
you're trying to just post a general question or you don't need someone to be dynamically working with you, right? Like that's where I would go to the, the uh, subreddit, you know, the auto hockey subreddit or uh, what's the one starts with D discord. discord um, yeah. Those are two great ones that, that you would go to, to get people are hanging out there often and will be very responsive. The forum, there's a lot of people there, but it depends on where you you've posted it and how much traffic are going there. Right. Like if you get a response right away. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say one of the things is that a lot of time you can get that quick and easy answer by going to a live chat. They can probably answer you very quickly. Mm -hmm. If it's a small thing, if it's something bigger, you might still need to wait and you still need to wait your turn anyway, because all of them are there of their own accord. So there's there's no way for you to demand an answer or anything because they're not real support or whatever you call that. But yeah, I'd say I've used both and I still prefer the forum in special cases. Mm -hmm. like I might have used some kind of the end of the day on trying to solve something and I'm, I've, I've hit that brick wall and so I can't, I can't solve this. I'll need to answer someone, but I don't have too much time. So I can't sit in the chat for an hour back and forth right. and seeing what they come up with, testing it and, and showing them how that went and they can help me uh, work on it and stuff like that. But I could post a well-informed post on the forum and hope that within the next eight to 16 hours or whatever, yeah. someone else might be able to chime in or multiple people might be able to actually do that because the time frame of the two things are so separate. The, the other thing I would add to that, and this is a big ask for people who are new to this, but if you're doing something that you think, hey, a lot of other people are gonna have this similar kind of question, Right. This would be a good thing for people to be able to know. That's where the forum, particularly, right? People go there and search, right? So mm -hmm. when you do get a solution, it'll probably help other people later, right? And so if you're do working with something, let's say Excel, right? Or web scraping, that, that's something I would definitely be doing on the forum because your question, if it's, if, if you're, if it's a bit advanced and, you know, um, it, it's, you were having some big issues with it, a lot of other people probably have the same issue. Right, so it's great. Versus the subreddit uh, or in Discord. Like, can you search Discord? I guess you can. Uh, you but... can search Discord, but you can't Google Discord. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, in the subreddit, like people, I I don't usually go there looking for a solution. I might go there for live help, but I don't go there to try to see how someone solved something at one point. That, that maybe I'm not using it properly. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's one of the big selling points of using like uh, the, the forum or the Reddit or whatever. Stack Overflow, yeah. Exactly. It is that other people will be able to find it in a month, two years, whatever. Right. And the solution might, if you're working through it with someone on there, it might actually be able to help the person better, even yeah. if their need is slightly different. Whereas right. getting the live help on... Um, on a chat or something like that is great. It, it can help you loads, but yeah, it, it won't help anybody else. It, it's kind of scary how many times, Jackie, I'll go back to the forum and I'll be go go searching for you know, how to do something. And I end up stumbling on either a response from you or a conversation of you and I actually, you know, working on the same darn thing, you know, five years ago, whatever. I'm like, oh, oh, oh I, I ran into this before. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Let's, let's get moving along here with the list here. The, the next one, and I'm going to actually pre premise, premise, preface it with uh, being humble, right? So what I love, this goes with life, right? You know, ask politely in the beginning and think in advance for any help they're going to offer to you. Um, and you're just much more likely to get, you know, what you want if you're, kind and humble and you know explain how it's going to help you yeah absolutely there there's i don't see any downside to doing that well <laughs> you actually asking politely or thanking in advance or both or whatever type of uh, way you do this 
it, it, it really can hurt. I don't see how it's supposed to do that. If done correctly, of course, if you do it sarcastically or something, right. or if people overread uh, into it. It's yeah. Easy. Yeah. Sure, everything can be twisted, but yeah, generally I'd say if you ask politely and thank you in advance or just say thank you afterwards, if that's how you want to do it, sure. But do that because a lot of the helpers on, and that, that goes for, I think, every form with any, every language, with every type of question thing. Most times, all that people get is that thank you. And it's actually very rare. I, I think that in the time and with all the questions I answered over the years, it's almost possible for me to remember how many times I got a thank you after helping. Someone. Wow, that's so I, sad. It, it's, it's not that I don't think they appreciate it. Right. They just don't always think about giving that final thank you, right? And they're like a kid with a new toy, right? You just fixed a problem they've been having and then they go and play with the toy, right? And Absolutely. And I've seen times and times again, people coming back to the barn or wherever it is and say, they're trying to give back, right? It's right. Because they received so much help. So it's not because they ain't grateful or ain't thankful or whatever. Right. It's just a, a thing people don't, often do which is a good point for us to remember too that are helping other people is when people are stuck on something they have a need they're trying to solve something and you know generally speaking when they get it fixed they go they have to go do what they were working on a lot of time right so it does make sense it is nice when they circle back later um, which actually let's go into the next one of you know you can you can offer to pay or compensate which is nice you don't have to but um, even at the bare minimum say how you'll be in their debt Right. Like, that's a great way to say, like, you know, it, it, again, this is a psychological kind of trick. Right. But it it gets people to realize that you're, you know, you're acknowledging that they are, are helping you. Yeah, I'd say I have a, a really good live friend here that he will in no way keep a score, but he'll still have kind of a mental idea of you are probably uh, in in debt to him with whatever. He will yeah. never take it up and he will never yeah. expect you to pay the debt. Yeah. But let's say that <laughs> currently I'm, I'm in the middle of a move and he has helped me before. I have helped him and I think right. he has helped me four times. I've helped him one or something. And I would never expect him to say it. And he would always have an idea of one of us owing the other one a move. But yeah, stuff like that, really knowing that you might have some kind of debt you could. Yeah. So it it makes sense. Here's a good example of that. I I have a good buddy of mine who he happens to actually code in auto hockey, but he also knows setting up servers in in WordPress really well. So when you're busy, Jackie, I bug him. Um, And, uh, at one point when I was switching my ISP and where my website was hosted, I had some horrendous issues. And, and there were a couple of days where I kept hit, calling him back up and we'd spend hour, you know, a couple hours fixing things. And, uh, and then I, I can't remember if I sent him, I sent him money. I'm trying to remember if it was an Amazon gift card or something, but I think I gave him like 50 bucks or something. And he was blown away. And I'm like, look, you, you know, I, I kind of your point. He he never viewed it as work, right? He was happy to help, but I really felt like I'm using this guy as tech support. You know, I mean, he's saving my butt, and I don't ever want him to think like to even have that as a concern. And in, in, in the bare minimum, it was just a it's a it was a, a great easy way for me to let him know that I'm thankful, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. I I I have a live uh, couple of times in my lifetime, and. Most of the time, I'll help people just because, hey, I know you. I'm spending my day with you. I'm helping you. Uh, Nothing more in it than that. I would expect nothing for it. Maybe if I'm thirsty, you'll provide some water or whatever. Uh, Just the bare minimum, but nothing more than that. 
And I remember one of the first times that I was helping my sister. She had just bought a new house with her husband at the time. And they were renovating the kitchen. And because of that, they had to put in a new uh, drain pipe for, for that. And so a lot of digging. There weren't room for machines at the places mm. where we needed to dig. So it was by hand. Mm-hmm. And we used maybe a week or whatever on digging all of the stuff and laying all of that stuff and stuff like that. And when we were done, I was just happy. And we were sitting and I don't remember drinking, eating, whatever we we're doing. And they ended up offering me a card. An old beat down thing they had in their driveway somewhere. It wasn't worth much, but just the idea of them offering me something of that much value to me. Yeah. It, it blew me away completely. Yep. I, it was just, whoa. So, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that was an early thing that I, uh, had happened where I was like, yeah, you don't need to expect anything to actually get a lot. So. Yeah, uh, I think the next one, I can take that one. The fifth one is, if you know someone, mention them by name. You can tag them on the forums, you can tag them in the chat, stuff like that. But again, we talked about this, Joe. I had the feeling of, for people to mention me by name, I I would personally like for them to have some kind of rapport with me already. I, I wouldn't want new users that had seen me answer questions about calm uh, over and over tag me because currently I'm not that active. I might go look at it. I might be able to answer, but how about all the other people who might be able to answer or who wanted to answer or sure. wanted to try and solve it? They might not because you had actually tagged me. So. I think it goes both ways with that one. I agree. And now this is where I would say is if, if you've seen, even if the person wasn't helping you and, but um, you know, you see that person has helped someone else on a similar topic, right? That's where I would say maybe to make sure that they, you know, when I come in, I, I post, I add on to that conversation. Then I might mention you by name to, to, um, you know, kind of make sure I get your attention. So you get an alert and let, like, no, I'm asking you. However, it is a double-edged sword, right? And um, maybe yeah, don't do um, it at first. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also thinking of just right now is like, yeah, you can probably find people on the forum who can answer almost anything. Uh, here I'm thinking lexicos and people like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it, it wouldn't make sense if, if all new users was like, uh, right. I'll just tag him because right. he can most certainly answer this question, but just end up not being worth anything because the person would just ignore it in the end, right? So yeah, I've I've seen a few times where people over tag might be a way of putting it. I've seen it with John and Scan Electricals mm-hmm. and, and other people like that. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's it's fair enough. They might know it, but should you really have tagged them here? Maybe have someone else come in. I know that it was a big thing with the Bach forum at one point, mm. where they were using a lot of time in telling people that even though you're experiencing an issue with this thing, it might not be a bug, try and ask and ask for help first. So someone else can help you figure out if it's you that's having an issue or, it's, right. yeah, or so that you can kind of peer review it before it actually ends up being a bug and you actually end up tagging whoever needs to be tagged. So yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a double edged sword. That's for sure. Yeah. This, this next one is one I, I truly appreciate. And I got to say it really works on, on me is when people it's it's one of the things I live for is when people write me and say, Hey Joe, like I've been watching your videos and they've helped me so much. Like they've saved me X amount of hours or I have this much more time to spend with my son or whatever, right? Like how it benefits them. And it doesn't have to be 
again, it could be they spend more time with their family or they, they, they made more money or whatever it is. Right. But hearing that really, it's, it makes me feel really good. Right. And I think that's a great way to get people to, because I know for Jack, you're the same way too. You'll, we'll watch people like even our colleagues at work, right. When I used to work in corporate office and, and like, they work so hard and, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's hard to watch sometimes um, when you're like, man, I could, I can make this so much easier for you. And most of those people are very appreciative, but on a forum electronically, I think we often forget to convey that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think you might be right. It, it's often people will have an issue and they might not tell you much about the context of what they're trying to do. Um, they're just trying to copy four files or convert PDFs to Word files or whatever. It could be anything, but you never really get <laughs> why they're trying to do it. Yeah. Or, yeah. or the scale. It fits them if yeah. it's, if it's uh, something they can solve. Sometimes people uh, who do this might say not their job or anything like that, but at least so much time that it actually makes, gives meaning to their day that, that you were able to help them this way. So yeah, absolutely. I've, I've also come into topics where someone would be semi-disabled having issues with arthritis or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. stuff like that, or the- Carpal tunnel. Yeah, and yeah. they might get a lot of answers, but just the idea of you knowing that time you spent with them will benefit in this and this way. Yeah, improves lives. Yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I, I moved this one on to the last one, uh, the seventh one, or I'm not sure that actually the last one. But try and be patient. Only asking the question in one location. And I've seen this a couple of times over. This is especially important if you mention someone by name, as we said before. <laughs> yeah. right? it's, it's just like, right. mm, okay, so, so I've used time on answering your question. And I'd say there's nothing more annoying than, than seeing you posting your question somewhere else. It's okay if you've got a, an, an answer over there. I, I can't knock you for trying to seek other answers. But then I might have been able to save time. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, go I'm, in and delete the question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, fair enough. But yeah, I'd, I'd say someone would post to the forum, then they might go to Stack Overflow and ask the same thing, or they might go to the chat and get a quick answer, and they will no, never close the topic. And a day or two after them posting it, you might answer it with a long post. You might have done a lot of research, whatever. That might help someone else, but the, the issue might also be so specific that it won't. And it would have been nice to actually know that they had gotten what they needed somewhere else. So, yeah. The, um, the one that I thought of earlier, that's kind of related to a lot of what we talked about. Uh, and part of it has to do with how how small the auto hotkey community is, but I think this would apply in other communities as well, is when you're, when you take time to ask, to do your homework, to do your research. And then when you do ask a question, you ask a well-formulated, you know, question with, with the right information there and stuff over time, people realize like when I see a question from, you know, from you, Hey, I'm going to pay attention to it because you don't ask bad questions. <laughs> Right. And, and, you know, names at, you know, when I think when people monitor the form overall, they're just helping everyone, you don't see it as much, but after a little bit, when you get a little more niche into what people are working on, you know, the names of people, right. Yeah. And, and, and man, I, I know for me and for you too, right. For you even more, but by you know, the people that are on the forum, they know who you are. I think a lot know who I am. And when we ask a question or we ask for help, they, we're, people are much more likely to help us, right? Because A, we, they've seen we've actually helped other people. I think that's part of it. But B is we've done our homework, right? We don't ask these crazy, simple questions. Um, and, and yeah, it just, you're developing a relationship 
and the brand, so to speak. Uh, kind of rapport, yeah. which is what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I, I think that's that's a good point because no matter how you put it, people will even learn how your post usually looks. Uh, if your answer usually works and different stuff like that. So, so you can easily build some kind of reputation, rep, reputation, reputation. Mm -hmm. I think that's correct. Yep. Um, for yourself this way, because if you do your research before you ask a question, or if you do stuff like test your code before you answer someone, you might end up being so good that people will still take that pseudo code you wrote on your phone as a good answer. Right. Just because what you usually do works. Right? It, uh, again, most likely your pseudo code probably also kind of works. Right. So, so yeah, you, you can really do a lot with that. What was that line in Star Trek where? Captain Kirk was talking to Spock and Spock said something and Captain Kirk said, I'll, I'll take your guesses, you know, over other people's facts any day of the week. Right. Like he's like, <laughs> you know, you've earned the, 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 my trust so much that like, even when you're hypothesizing and guessing, like, you know, I'll take that over someone else's, you know, certainty. Um, yeah. But, you know, and, and actually one, I remember a really great one because it's still a great overall thread on the forum, but there was one where Mickers was posting some questions about, not questions, but things he was learning about web scraping and this and that. And Tank, if I remember correctly, was helping him. And Tank, especially years and years ago, he could be pretty abrupt, right? And I haven't mm -hmm. seen that from him in a long time. But um, with this, you could see Tank actually really guiding him and helping him. And it was one of the things that light on in my head of like, you know, if you are showing you're doing your best to try to actually learn something, you know, even harsh people will really try to help you if you show you're making an effort. It's when you don't make an effort, that's where people can be. And then let's switch to the auto it community, right? They can, we, we've seen some of the stuff they, they will post, right? Like even that comment of when I tried posting to the LinkedIn auto it group and like they just hammered me like uh, just ridiculous. Um, yeah. I'd say I, I've experienced and from Tank as well, posting stuff, issues I have, I've tried to go over most of these points that we've had here, uh, people starting to answer me, me working exactly from what they say, trying to use what examples they, they gave me or what things to try and post new posts that show that I tried what they said and what mm -hmm. the results were and stuff like that. But I've experienced multiple times over people coming in and complimenting or whatever you call that of mm -hmm. either Oh, you're you're getting good at this, or you're you're really yeah. You know, it might be a different wording, but the idea of our small community there, people taking their time to actually telling other users that they're getting better, yeah, that that they're progressing. I love that about that uh, forum and community in general. That, as you said yourself, you'll get to know people. You might even have an idea of what their level is. And over time, if you stay, you might also be able to see them progress. And actually telling people that you're seeing progression is something that I would have never expected from before. Mm -hmm. And other people expressing that to you as if you yeah. knew in real life. Yeah, and, and which is one of the foundations of, of our friendship too. And right over the years, we you know we've helped each other. I mean, I mean you helped me a lot more on on the the actual programming side of things, but um, but it, it's it's building a relationship with with you know people and and people know that like when you ask, also you know when I ask you, I've I have tried to Google it. You know, I have tried to find a solution before I jump to you and say, hey, you know, do you know how this works? Um, but yeah, it's uh. I, I'd say I've seen very bad examples of, of different types of ways to use uh, relationships and or whatever. The one that always jumps to mind is someone far out that I had on my Facebook actually making a status update of um, 
if train A leaves the station at 1600 uh, with a speed of uh, 100 miles and train B leaves, when will the two be? I was like, is Facebook really the right place to ask math questions this way? I'm pretty sure you could have Googled this answer very, very quickly. Yeah. Or something like that. It was just, to me, it was way out there that the person actually thought to just throw it out there to, to the people they knew on. Whereas I've been in the office and I'm sitting maybe two desks down and someone would be, Jackie, how is it uh, you do um, that formula in Excel with, you know, where where they actually color the cells after it? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I actually don't remember that right now, but I can Google it. I can tell you, but you could probably have Googled it yourself, right? It's like, is it really, does it, is it really beneficial? I, I understand because I like the communication with my colleagues and them using my expertise on it, I might be able to Google it faster. Who knows? But the idea of doing it that way is kind of backwards. Yeah. It, it reminds me uh, back in my undergrad, um, I had this Excel. Uh, well, it was a it was a course on like modeling and Excel was something we used a lot in the course. It wasn't, the course wasn't on Excel, but we used Excel a lot in it. And this one lady, you know, I was mid twenties, late twenties, and she was, you know, early thirties. Um, and she had no idea how to use a computer. I mean, she was, to, to, you know, but so I was helping her, but I wouldn't solve the problem. I would ask her questions and force her to actually get it. And, you know, tell me the answer, even though I was directing her like crazy. And she really just wanted me to, to solve it, to do the answer. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like, oh, that's not, you know, Besides the whole thing of ethics, like, you're, you're never going to learn if I just solve it for you, right? Like, you know, you need to learn the approach and learn how to fish, right? It's, it's so critical. So um, often I, I, when I help people, I don't give them the entire answer. You know, I, I give them a direction and, and sometimes I'll give them specific stuff. It just depends, right? But Or I'll work with them to show them. But we, we both know you got to have that light bulb go off for yourself for it to really stick. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, you, got, you all enjoyed that. Um, thank you again for subscribing and uh, like and comment. Uh, let us know if you have any other things that you think we should have mentioned. Yeah, we'll, we'll be very happy to hear your feedback. That's for sure. All right, Jackie. It's good talking to you. Yeah, bye, Joe. Bye. We love reading your comments. That's for sure. So let us hear what you think. We love those likes and please do share. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. In today's podcast, we're going to cover seven steps how to push past the plateau and increase your learnings. Yeah, make sure you move past that plateau. So if you enjoyed listening to that, make sure you head to pod.v-automator.com and take a look for it.